Hey guys, Constance here. Welcome back to Good Life Farm. So I'm bringing you into the kitchen today to make dinner. Uh, this is actually a recipe that I have filmed already in the past, but I didn't do a regular cooking video. I did one of those really short little, we call them hands and pans video, where it's like the super quick, no talking type of one, um, the kind you see on social media. But I thought I would bring you into the kitchen while I make this recipe and actually walk you through the process. So the recipe that I'm going to make is my homemade meatloaf. And I can tell you that while there's a lot of things my husband calls his favorite, this recipe in particular is truly one of the favorites in my family. Um, you know, when it comes to meatloaf, that isn't usually something that people get excited about. But when my kids were still at home and I announced it was meatloaf for dinner, they would actually cheer. You would get the yes every time I announced it. So if people don't cheer when you announce meatloaf for dinner, maybe it's the wrong recipe. Uh, and this is also, in fact, my most popular recipe of all the 700 recipes on my website. Um, this is the one that is continually every day in the top 10 and often right there at number one. So let's get started. So the first thing, and actually let me turn the light on. I'm going to have to start cooking my recipes earlier in the day so we have the light. Uh, so to begin with, I've got a nice big mixing bowl here and I've got two pounds of ground beef and I'm just going to kind of take my fingers and gently break this apart a little bit. And the reason I do this is so that when I add in all of the rest of the ingredients, it will be easier to get everything mixed together because you don't want to mix too much. You want to mix as little as possible. So I'm just going to break all of these chunks apart into smaller bits. Okay, that'll do it for now. So now I'm going to need about a cup of diced onion and this is a pretty big onion so I think I'll only use half of it. Now, my original recipe on my website calls for this diced onion to actually be sauteed in a little bit of butter before it goes into the meatloaf. That is a completely optional step. Uh, you can do it if you want. If you don't want, you don't have to. But if you have someone who really hates the texture of onion, then by sauteing it, it softens it up and it kind of camouflages the fact that there's onion in uh, the meatloaf. That's just a little trick that I used when I had lots of picky eaters at home, but I like the flavor of onion. And I'm gonna dice this pretty finely. And we'll toss this in with the ground beef. Now when it comes to making this meatloaf, I usually make it with all ground beef. However, I have made this recipe with ground moose meat, you can make it with venison, you can make it with turkey, you could make it with a mixture. You could combine uh, one pound ground beef with one, one pound ground turkey. Uh, you could do like half beef, half venison. It is actually really flexible. You just want to have two pounds of ground meat. So now to my meat mixture, I'm going to add one cup of, of uh, fresh breadcrumbs. 
And really all I did was I just took some slices of bread and I pulsed them in a food processor until they were crumbs. You don't want to use dry breadcrumbs because that's going to absorb um, moisture out of the meat and contribute to dry meatloaf. So we want one cup of fresh breadcrumbs. Toss those in. We want three quarters of a cup of shredded or grated Parmesan cheese. I'm just going to kind of eyeball that there. It doesn't have to be super precise. Add that in. So now I'm going to grab my smaller bowl here and I'm going to need two eggs. And we're going to give these a quick whisking. Now we'll add in some seasonings. I'm going to need a teaspoon, a teaspoon of dry oregano. And I'm just going to eyeball this. And I like to mix my seasonings in with my liquids because then I, I feel that it helps it get incorporated into the meat mixture better half a teaspoon of garlic powder a half a teaspoon of black pepper pinch of salt a cup of milk and two tablespoons of Worcestershire we'll mix these together Now I'm going to take my meat mixture here. I'm going to pour my liquid in. And I'm going to very gently mix this together. And I really just do that by sticking my fingers in there, lifting up and letting it kind of fall together. You don't ever want to over mix anything that is uh, a ground meat mixture, whether it's meatballs or meatloaf, because the more you mix it, the denser it's going to get, and that is going to lead to tough and dry meatballs or meatloaf. So if you ever have an issue with dry meatloaf, that could be one of the reasons. and you want it to just be barely mixed together. And again, if you wanted sauteed onions, you would just saute the onions with a little bit of butter or some olive oil if you choose, and you would do that before you start putting all of your ingredients together. Now I'm going to grab a baking sheet. I'm going to line it with some parchment paper. This just makes cleanup easier. And I'm going to take my, my meat mixture and I'm going to spread it out in the center in like a long strip. 
now I'm just going to take my hands and I'm going to kind of press the meat down, flatten it out a little bit, and then bring the edges in to make it nice and straight. And you just want to make sure that all of this is the same thickness. That way it cooks evenly. Making a big, basically like a long brick. <laughs> And you could do this in a loaf pan if you wanted to. Uh, it would need to be a probably a pretty big loaf pan, but this is how I do uh, my meatloaf. All right, so that's together. So now I'm just going to whip up the topping. All right, so we need about a third of a cup of ketchup. quarter of a cup of brown sugar, and a tablespoon of Worcestershire. I'm just going to eyeball it. All right, we'll whisk these together until they're nice and smooth. Now we're going to spread this all over the top of the meatloaf. All right, so now the meatloaf is baking in the oven for one hour, approximately, at 350 degrees. Now, the very important thing to note about baking meatloaf is, first of all, the time is going to be approximate. You're going to want to use a meat thermometer. And my favorite kind of meat thermometer is one that has the, the probe that goes into the meat and just bakes with it in there. Um, it has a little sensor that sits out on the counter or they're magnetic and sometimes they can stick to the front of your, your oven door, um, but that allows you to monitor the temperature of what you're baking without opening and closing your oven. With that kind, you can set the temperature that is your gold temperature and it'll sound an alarm when it reaches the correct temperature for whatever it is that you're cooking. Now, I mentioned earlier a couple things about preventing dry meatloaf. One of those is using uh, fresh breadcrumbs as opposed to dry breadcrumbs. Uh, the second tip was about not overworking your meat mixture. Just barely mix it, be as gentle as you can. Don't pack it all together and over mix it because that causes it to be dense and hard and dry. Um, and the third thing is the temperature. I am cooking this to 170 degrees. Now here's the thing, even at 170 degrees, that meat might be a little bit pink in the middle when you open it, when you cut into that meatloaf. And there is a reason for that. It isn't that the meatloaf isn't cooked all the way. It's the onions. Raw onions have an enzyme that causes meat to not darken. It causes meat to keep the pink color. And so when you have raw onions in something like meatloaf or meatballs, and they're in there releasing those enzymes, it's going to cause the meat to stay pink even when it's fully cooked. But then when you uh, cut into the meatloaf and you slice it, and it's exposed to oxygen, that oxygen allows the meat to actually turn brown. So if you slice that meatloaf and it's pink, and then a couple minutes later it's brown, that's why. And sauteing the onions prior to putting them into meatloaf can actually prevent that from happening so that your 
uh, onions don't release that enzyme because it's already been cooked down. But just know that when it comes to meatloaf and there's pink in the middle, it doesn't mean it's undercooked. Trust your meat thermometer. All right, you guys, so there you go. Meatloaf is done, and this is a delicious recipe. You know, meatloaf is one of those dishes that it's not very photogenic, but if it's cooked right, it's going to be amazing. Everybody's going to love it, and they're not going to care how it looks. So that is how you make my classic traditional meatloaf. If you would like to give this recipe a try, I of course have a printable version of it on my website and I will put a link to that down below. So thanks for joining me here again in the Homestead Kitchen. My name is Constance at A Good Life Farm and I'll talk to you all next time.